Good evening, everyone. This is the uh, toughest part of the program where I stand between you and your meal, so we'll be, we'll be quick here. Uh, I am Scott Lakeham, Director of Athletics here at the University of Portland. And on behalf of the university, the entire athletic department would like to welcome you all to campus tonight for our Hall of Fame induction banquet, our 13th Hall of Fame induction banquet. Uh, before your meal is served and we begin the program, would like to call on Brother Thomas Giamenta for our, our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, we pray in the name of all athletes. God, who is our Father, we thank you for giving us life and talents for our participation in sports. Help us to play well, to use our powers to the full, to see them as gifts from you. Be with us when we may be hurt, when we have to deal with the pain of injury, disappointment, or loss. Keep us aware of the brotherhood and sisterhood we have made with all athletes, even when they are opponents. Free us from the temptation to fake or to foul or to cheat. We need to see that dedication to the cause will mean suffering. But let us know that it is the kind of suffering that leads to a new life and greater maturity. Help us play with our hearts and never lose heart. Most of all, help us never to quit in our efforts to be open to you. For we believe in your full coming into our lives as the way to real life in all we do. We believe it is the way of our becoming the truly human persons you destined each of us to be. Finally, Father, bless this food so that it might provide strength to do only what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It is dinner time. Following the conclusion of the meal, we will proceed with what should be a fantastic banquet program honoring our 2014 Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, we will start the program at about 8 o'clock. Thank you. As we are wrapping up the dinner portion of the program this evening, uh, we will get started uh, with a couple of thank yous and then proceed uh, with our inductions. I first would like to take this opportunity to thank the Athletic Hall of Fame Selection Committee for the time they devote to the process of selecting the inductees. I ask at this time that the members of the Hall of Fame Selection Committee please stand and be recognized. The Selection Committee members are Kristen Hepton Spear, Jim Sollers, Joe Etzel, Faye Beeler, Colin McGinty, John Nolan, Bill Reed, and Buzz Stroud. I'd like to thank those members of the committee at this time. I'd also like to thank Joe Etzel, who is here tonight. Without Joe and his foresight a number of years ago, the Hall of Fame would not exist. So Joe, thank you for creating the University of Portland Athletic Hall of Fame. After tonight, if you feel, as you look in your program or otherwise, someone is missing from the Hall of Fame, feel free to reach out to Buzz Straub or myself or PortlandPilots.com. Uh, we are always looking for nominations for future inductees. Also, we are honored that a few of our Athletic Hall of Fame members have joined us for tonight's banquet. Would Hall of Fame members Ray Feline, Jim Flynn, and sorry, Joe Etzel, I'm going to make you stand up again. Would Ray, Jim, and Joe please stand up and be recognized? Before we honor our incredibly deserving inductees, 
I would like to deliver a simple message to each of you. Thank you. Thank you for your blood, sweat, and tears left in the weight room, the training room, and the field of play. Thank you for your determination to be the best person, student, and athlete you could be, the best pilot you could be, on the field, in the classroom, and now most importantly, in life. University of Portland Athletic Department has grown to heights many did not think was possible. And that was done because of tonight's inductees and those who have gone into the Hall of Fame before you. For dreaming big and for being first class representatives of this university and athletic department in every aspect of your lives. We hope tonight's ceremony and induction tonight is one you will never forget. And for UP and UP Athletics, tonight is a small way of saying something we can never say enough. Thank you. Now it's time to present to you our 2014 University of Portland Athletic Hall of Fame inductees. As we introduce each of them, we have a video presentation that will provide you insight into their contributions and accomplishments to University of Portland Athletics. Each inductee or a designated representative will have the opportunity to share with us a few thoughts on the induction and tonight's event. Our first University of Portland Athletic Hall of Fame inductee is Roman Borvanov. Roman Borvanov took a circuitous route to the bluff where he played three seasons before embarking on a nine-year professional tennis career on the ATP Tour. A native of Chisinau, Moldova, Roman graduated high school in 1999 and then moved to Spokane after his mother was given a diversity visa. Roman then attended Spokane Community College for one season before joining coach Aaron Gross and the Pilots. Roman was an immediate impact player for the Pilots, earning team MVP honors all three seasons. A two-time West Coast Conference singles honoree, Roman posted a 19-2 record as a senior in 2005 and won his final seven dual singles matches to conclude his college career. His three-year career record for the Pilots was 53 singles and 37 doubles wins. Roman carried the momentum of his strong collegiate finish into a professional career that saw him rise to the top 200 in the world rankings in both singles and doubles. Roman would go on to be a regular on the Davis Cup team for Moldova, posting a 14-8 record in all competitions for his native country. He also won nine International Tennis Federation Future Singles titles and played in qualifying events for three of the four Grand Slam tournaments. Roman used Portland as his home base for training up until 2011 and has since moved to Miami, Florida. He announced his retirement from professional tennis last year and is now embarking on his own coaching career. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2014 University of Portland Athletic Hall of Fame inductee, Roman Borvanov. Good evening, everybody. Waiting for my father to set it up. <laughs> <laughs> Many athletes dream about this day. Honestly, I never even thought that someday I would be standing here in front of you considering all the amazing talent we have here at the University of Portland. So I would like right away to thank the Hall of Fame committee for bestowing this great honor upon me. Even though I never made millions and didn't win any big titles in my college or pro career, I'm thankful to tennis for giving me so many amazing moments and experiences. 
During my childhood and teenage years, tennis kept me busy and off the streets. In 2000, when my family came to the US on the green card lottery, thanks to tennis, I was lucky to meet many great people who led me in the right direction and made my childhood dream of playing on the ATP tour possible. First off, I thank my relatives from Spokane, Washington. They helped my family a lot during those first few months in the US. Also, I would like to thank the coaching staff at the Spokane Community College, Wally Heidenson, Andrea Payton, Mike, Michael Peeting, for helping me enroll into the school and start my education. Around that time, I was lucky to meet Kevin Jones, a former pilot standout in the 80s, who recognized my talent and steered me towards the University of Portland. I spent three years on this campus. I have many interesting memories and I will, that will stay with me forever. I remember one time I was losing my head on the tennis court and got mad at my doubles partner for missing an easy shot. During the changeover, my coach, Aaron Gross, came up to me and joked that my negativity sucked all the air out of the building. <laughs> I'm glad I met Aaron <laughs> and spent three years playing for him. Your positivity is infectious and it cured my negativity. You challenged me and motivated me every day and prepared me for a long journey on the pro tour. Your lessons helped me succeed on the tour and most importantly in life. I would like to mention assistant coaches Steve Asher and Henry Oldham and thank my teammates especially Peter Malachek, Quinn Borchard, Matt Laux, James Ratpath and many others who challenged me physically on a daily basis and pushed me to get better. Thanks, my, thanks to my teammates and their funny comments, I learned to take a joke <laughs> <laughs> and also laugh at myself and at my teammates without causing any harm. <laughs> Travis Parrott, whose list of accomplishments is much longer than mine, showed me how to be a tennis professional. He was the reason I decided during my recruiting trip that I would go to Portland. His success inspired me and training with him pushed me to get better every day. So many people to thank and not enough time. Thank you, Harry Merlo, for paying for my tuition and letting me graduate without thousands in loans. With his help and his foundation, we have Harry Merlo Field and LP Child Center. One day after I graduated, I had a privilege to hit some balls with Harry on his private tennis court. I couldn't believe how much energy he had at age 52. In 50 years from now, I hope I could move around like him as well. Another person who I will never forget is Thomas Garrison. He's a dear friend and a longtime supporter of the UP tennis team. Without his financial contribution, I would have never been able to play professionally. He believed in me and he was helping me until I was able to sustain myself from the tournament prize money. Next, I would like to thank University of Portland, University of Portland Athletic Department for providing me with a great opportunity of playing tennis while attending classes. And speaking of classes, I would like to thank all of my professors who put up with my constant traveling and worked around it so I could continue receiving valuable education while pursuing my tennis dream. Also, I want to thank fitness coaches and athletic trainers who helped me to stay in shape and injury-free for the most part of my career. In 2010, a new fitness coach on campus helped me to get in best physical shape of my life. The following year, I made the breakthrough in my game and reached a career-high top 200 in the world. Finally, I would like to thank my lovely parents, Claudia and Sergey. We are the first generation immigrants and they helped me as much as they could and they kept believing me and you guys kept believing in me even when I was down and ready to quit. I love you guys so much. 
and I will never be able to repay you for all the sacrifices that you had to make so that I could have a better future. My brother Andrei, who lives in Canada, is also here. He's the reason I started playing tennis in the first place. As a little kid, I enjoyed watching you compete and play tennis. And, when, and I always wanted, when I grew up, I always wanted to do the same thing you do. In conclusion, I would like to thank tennis for giving me an opportunity to travel the world and meet a lot of amazing people. Sometimes I couldn't afford the hotel and stayed and ate in people's houses and sometimes I stayed in five-star hotels paid by the tournament organizers. I played small tournaments in places as far as Brazil and Uzbekistan and also participated in Grand Slam events in London, New York and Melbourne. During my career, I trained a lot with non-ranked players and once with the number one ranked player Roger Federer on the center court in Indian Wells, California. Thanks to tennis, I met my beautiful girlfriend Melissa during my training in Florida in 2012. Now she's my fiance. It's been an amazing journey so far and I'm looking forward to giving back as a tennis coach and pass and pass along the lessons I learned here on campus to the next generation. Thank you. Our next 2014 Athletic Hall of Fame inductee is Jim Dorch. Jim Dorch was a high-profile recruit out of Portland's David Douglas High School when he arrived on the bluff. At 6'5", the two-sports star was a prototype small forward on the hardwood and a powerful presence when he stepped on the baseball diamond. Playing basketball for Hall of Fame coach Al Negrati and with Hall of Fame teammates Steve Anstett and Cincy Powell, he was graceful and athletic, combining good outside shooting with outstanding jumping ability. He was an Oregon State nemesis during his college career, scoring 17 as the Pilots upset the nationally ranked Beavers 67-58 in 1962. And he dropped 21 and 23 points on OSU during the 61-62 and 62-63 seasons. A four-year starter in center field for the Pilots, Jim was compelling in the field and at the plate. A copy of the Beacon from spring of 1964 noted that Jim was a pro prospect. He had the speed to chase down balls hit in the gap and turn them into outs, challenged base runners with a cannon arm, and brought home run power whenever he stepped in the batter's box. Jim's throwing ability led to 12 career appearances on the mound for the Pilots, but it was at the plate that he left a testament to his prowess as he compiled a career batting average of 354 and a career slugging percentage of 514. His teammates selected Jim as the Pilots' most valuable player in 1963, and following his senior season in 1964, he was signed by the Chicago White Sox. Jim returned to the bluff to complete his undergraduate work and received his Bachelor of Arts degree in 1973. Residing in Southern California, Jim passed away in 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, accepting on behalf of Jim Dorch is former Pilots head baseball coach and athletic director, Joe Etzel. It's clear, I'm gonna clear that. What is the clearance here? I don't know what that is. First, I'd like to uh, congratulate all the inductees tonight. Uh, You'll get better as the year goes by. You know, we all get stories about how great we were when we played ball, but this is probably the highest honor the athletic department can uh, bestow on anybody, so congratulations. Uh, as the video showed in the program, Jim passed away in 2012. I had the privilege of uh, watching him play both basketball and baseball. And if you think about it, uh, to play as a starting player for a Division I basketball program, and then also be able to sign 
professional baseball contract. That just doesn't happen too much today. Uh, now we read a lot about, and there's a lot of discussion about people specializing in one sport. And uh, I'm from the old school. I think the great athletes can do more than one. And that's a discussion we can have at a later time, I guess. But uh, by watching the video and reading in your program, there's not much else I can say. He was a great athlete, uh, a, a great guy. For you girls, he was also good looking. Uh, but he had a, a great career here, and I'm glad we could, can recognize him. So uh, thank you very much. I now ask you to turn your attention to the video screen for our third inductee, Shannon McMillan. A native of San Diego, California, Shannon McMillan spurned many high-profile offers and joined Clive Charles at Portland, a program that had yet to reach the NCAA playoffs when she arrived on campus in the fall of 1992. She immediately helped reshape Portland soccer by leading the team to its first NCAA tournament that season. Shannon would go on to lead the Pilots to four straight postseason appearances, the school's first College Cup semifinal in 1994, and the program's first NCAA championship game in 1995. A finalist for the Mac Herman Trophy in 1993 and 1994, Shannon was the unanimous National Player of the Year in 1995 after scoring 23 goals and recording a school record 16 assists. Shannon's collegiate legacy also included leading the nation with 58 total points in 1993, and she still ranks in the top 15 in NCAA history in both points and goals scored. Her collegiate honors also include two University of Portland Student Athlete of the Year awards, two West Coast Conference Offensive Player of the Year awards, and four National Soccer Coaches Association All-America selections. Shannon was a high-scoring forward for the U.S. national team and led the 1996 Olympic team to a gold medal with three goals in five matches, including game winners against Sweden and Norway. She also helped the U.S. team win the 1999 World Cup and a silver medal in the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney. In 2002, she scored 17 goals and was voted the U.S. Soccer Female Athlete of the Year. When Shannon retired from international competition in 2006, she had 60 career goals and 175 caps to her credit. A founding member of the Women's United Soccer Association, Shannon played three seasons for the San Diego Spirit. She currently coaches and mentors youth soccer players as the director of club operations of San Diego's Del Mar Carmel Valley Sharks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2014 University of Portland Athletic Hall of Fame inductee, Shannon McMillan. I don't have to worry about the overhang. Can you see me actually? <laughs> Um, first of all, thank you to the selection committee for this incredible honor. Congratulations to all the nominees, especially the 2002 team. I'm not going to lie, I think I've harbored a secret jealousy for you guys because you were able to give Clive something that I wasn't. So congratulations to you guys. I'm extremely honored to be going in with all of the inductees tonight. Um, a lot of people to thank for where I ended up and what I've been able to do in my career. First and foremost, my big brother, Sean. Um, and a special thank you to Buzz, who helped arrange a surprise arrival for them. I had no idea that they were gonna be here, my brother and my niece, so thank you. Uh, my brother's two years older than me. I followed him around and basically tagged on with him, whether it was street hockey, basketball, baseball. He hated his bratty little sister, but at the end of the day, he ended up being one of my biggest fans, so thank you for your continued unconditional support and love. Um, to my family that's here and my friends that are like my family, thank you guys for being here. Um, to all the girls in 2002 that I was able to 
be a part of somehow. I think probably maybe just trying to keep you out of trouble off the field more than anything. Um, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun to watch you guys all grow and to see all the kids that are out here today and to think of how old we are. When we're going in Hall of Fame, it means we're old. <laughs> Um, a lot of you out there probably don't know just how shy, scared, and timid I was as a freshman. Nyla Stuckey, you saw her in her infamous braid that went down to the back of her knees, saw me as a junior in high school at the Far West Regional Tournament and told Clive, you've got to look at this girl. And that was the moment in my life that changed my life for the better. Um, I came up here on my recruiting trip and was blown away with the community, the support, the university, and I knew right away before I even left campus that this was the place for me. I'm so grateful to all the trainers that have kept me healthy and on the field, all the professors that put up with, as Roman said, our travel schedule, making up a t test here or there. Professor Duff tried to tell me I was just as good in the classroom as I was on the field. I think he's being nice. Um, but I'm, I'm grateful to everybody that had a part um, Garrett, who was just a grad assistant, I think we were learning together as we went, big man, never forget M&Ms, the water babies, sunblock, um, people that have made such a profound impact in my life, um, but <laughs> try to get through this part without crying. Um, Clive Charles was someone that as I said, most of you guys don't know how shy and scared I was. I, Clive used to tell me the story of a walk-on calling me off a free kick in, I think, probably the second day of training. And she walked up and said, I got it. And I said, all right. And he stopped the scrimmage and came over and started to berate me. As, you know, you're on a full ride scholarship, and this kid, I don't even know who her name is, is calling you off this free kick. Um, and from there, he just truly believed in me, first and foremost, as a person. And I went through a lot of hardships. My freshman year, I lost my best friend from high school due to heat stroke. And the only thing Clive cared about was me as a person and taking care of me and making sure that he, I knew that he was there and that he, I had a family here. He was someone that taught me to believe in myself off the field and taught me so many life lessons that today as a coach, as a friend, as a partner, as a mom, as a sister, every role I have, I always think of Clive and I look back to all the lessons I learned from him yelling at me at one halftime, and I think I ignored him for a week until he brought me into his office and said, what's your problem? <laughs> and I said, well, you yelled at me. <laughs> he said, that was a week ago. He said, we can't let what happens on the field affect us as people. We have to take our lumps. We have to get over it and deal with it. And he was my first true source of a father figure that I had looked for for so long and gave me so many life lessons, as I said, and just truly, I know I wouldn't be here as, and have the career I had as a player without him because he truly taught me that I had some potential and that I could believe in it from blowing my ACL three months before the World Cup in 2003 and fighting my way back on the team is because of a phone call from Clive. To everything as a person, as I said, he had such a profound effect on me. A special thank you to Clarina who shared him with us for so long and put up with us all coming over to your house for dinner. And I'm sure leaving your house a wreck and for putting up with Clive and all of the jokes that he used to play, especially on the freshman class of the 2002 team. How many times he got boogie with all of his jokes, but he made it special. He made it about us as people first and foremost. And I owe everybody that's in here who had the honor of knowing that man and playing for him are better people for it. And I know that if I can touch at least one kid at least half as much as he touched me, I'll have done a good thing in this life. I am so proud to be a pilot. Even now as a coach, I'm trying to send as many this way. I'll always have purple blood, and this is an incredible, incredible honor, and I'm very grateful for this, and it is the pinnacle of my career to be here. As I said, I wish I could, I would give everything back today if I could have been a part of that team to give Clive his first championship. So kudos to you guys, and thank you guys very much. Now I invite you to look at the video screens to learn a little more about Wally Panel. A Chicago native out of Carver High School, 
Wally Panel was a driving force behind pilot basketball fortunes during his college career. A pass-first point guard who could also break down a defender and get to the rim, Wally helped lead a pilot frosh team that averaged 86 points a game. In his first varsity season, 1956-1957, he averaged almost 14 points per game, was selected the team's most valuable player, and was named a Catholic Digest All-America. In four years at Portland, he combined with his high school teammate and UP Hall of Fame guard Jimmy Armstrong to form one of the most dynamic backcourts in the West. They were dubbed the Whirlwind Twins. During the 1958-59 season, Wally tallied 12 points as he directed the Pilots to a 70-67 win over rival Seattle U that broke a 12-game win streak by Seattle and led to he and his teammates being carried off the floor by UP fans. The team captain that season, Wally also led the Pilots to their first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament, and in that March 1959 game against DePaul, he led Portland in scoring with 17 points. Although he did not play baseball until he enrolled at UP, Wally was a vital presence in center field and a key ingredient to the Pilots' back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances in 1957 and 1958. In a 33-game season in 1958, he led the Pilots in steals with 16 and homered against USC in the NCAA tournament. A 300 hitter, he still ranks in the Pilots' top 10 in career triples as well as steals. The New York Yankees took note and following his senior season and graduation, he signed a professional contract with the American League dynasty. Following professional baseball, Wally, who took his degree in business, embarked on a career with the IRS. He passed away in 2000. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2014 University of Portland Athletic Hall of Fame inductee Wally Panel. Accepting on behalf of the Panel family tonight is Wallace Panel Jr. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, the reason why I'm probably standing up here today is that uh, my father was a very shy individual, and um, it would, even though he could probably participate or, uh, in competition in front of thousands of people, for him to get up and stand in front and talk in front of five people would be a, a stretch. So that's why, you know, it, it's, it's kind of late in him coming here. But um, uh, sports was an outlet for my dad. Um, as a young man growing up in Chicago, sports gave him an avenue to go out and see things and go different places and it allowed him to dream about certain things in life. And um, you're right, you cannot, uh, baseball and basketball were inseparable to him. I mean, the, the very day that he and Jim Armstrong um, signed letters of intent to come to play, uh, play for Portland, uh, my dad was out playing baseball and uh, somebody got cleated at first base and um, they had to stop the game and he went home and Alan Negrati was there patiently waiting for him. And um, if he was here today, he would really want to thank Alan Negrati for recruiting him. But of greater, equal or greater importance, he would thank the University of Portland for giving him the tools uh, to be successful in life. You know, my dad did a lot of things as a student athlete here on the athletic field of competition, but he never opened up the scrapbooks at home. He never bragged about things he did as a student athlete. He bragged about the classes he took in logic and, 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 and the things that he learned here at Portland. But, um, you know, he met my mother here, fell in love, he got married as a student, but began a family here. And although he had chances to play professional baseball and basketball, different times in his life, when he got married, his goals, his aspirations, they matured. It was about taking care of his family. And uh, um, while he earned his degree in accounting, he went on to work for the IRS and Department of Labor. And um, while he competed in a big way, he didn't audit uh, regular homeowners, he audited um, oil companies in Alaska and uh, pension plans for banks in the Beverly Hills. Um, but one of the most gratifying things he told me is that University of Portland gave him the tools to be successful in life, but even of great importance, it gave him a sense of family. It was a community that he belonged to. 
And so that was very important to him. And, uh, and like I say, education was very important to him. He was the first person in his family to earn a degree. His brothers and sisters went on to earn degrees. And almost any of his, there's, he doesn't have a child or a grandchild who doesn't have a degree or isn't working towards a degree right now. So on behalf of uh, my family and my dad, who's not here today because he passed on, we just want to say thank you to the University of Portland for Alan Aguilar for recruiting him. Thank you for Portland for just giving him the tools to educate him and giving him the tools to be successful in life. And um, when he did retire from the IRS, even though he was a publican, hundreds and hundreds of people, business owners, uh, homeowners, professionals, they slept good at night knowing that Wally Panel was their tax man. So thank you very much. God bless you. Really appreciate you allowing me to be here. Hard to follow tax man stories, uh, but last and uh, certainly not least, uh, the next and final video is the 2002 NCAA champion University of Portland women's soccer team. The 2002 Portland women's soccer team was a resilient group. Following the lead of head coach Clive Charles, who was battling prostate cancer, the players overcame a variety of obstacles to win the school's first NCAA championship in any sport. The season began with the absence of star forward Christine Sinclair to Canadian national team, and the pilots dropped a pair of matches at BYU and Utah. The team responded with a 13-match unbeaten streak, including a tie with number one North Carolina in which the Tar Heels were fortunate to survive with a point in front of a vocal Merlot field crowd. Late in the season, conference rival Santa Clara pulled out a 1-0 win over the Pilots to win the WCC title, but it would not be the last time the teams would meet. Seeded eighth, Portland outscored its opponents in the playoffs by a 14-1 margin, including a drubbing of Utah on the road and a penalty kick win at Stanford. After knocking off Penn State in the semifinals, Portland faced a familiar foe in the title game, Santa Clara. Down 1-0 early in the second half, Portland equalized when a Sinclair cross found the side netting. In overtime, starting goalkeeper Lauren Arase was knocked out of the game in the first overtime. With a concussion and walk-on freshman Kim Head was called on for her only action with the Pilots. From that point on, Portland took control of play and when Kristen Moore intercepted a Santa Clara pass and sent a cross to Sinclair who found the back of the net in the 104th minute, the elusive championship that Charles and the team sought was finally theirs. There's no doubt that 2002 season was played for Clive and the team would accept nothing less than a championship. In the locker room before the kickoff of the championship game, Clive said, if you have fun, you will win and make me very, very happy. If you have fun, you will win. <laughs> and you'll make me very, very happy. <laughs> it would be the last competitive game Clive coached and it could not have been any more fitting. We also have a, a second video with the 2002 NCAA champion team. Although she could not attend due her due to her head coaching responsibilities at San Jose State this weekend. We are pleased to have a video message from Lauren Hansen. Hi Pilots, wish I could be there with you all. I just wanted to say what a tremendous honor it is for our 2002 team to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Obviously, it was awesome to win a national championship for the school and soccer program, but I got more out of my four years than just that. I got a quality education and an unbelievable soccer coach that helped me to grow in character and life. Thank you, Clive, UP, and all the Pilot supporters, and keep up the strong tradition. Go Pilots!
Now we ask that each of the team members present, and I'll announce you one by one, please come forward to the front of the stage area here as you are introduced, and uh, our Associate Athletic Director, Buzz Stroud, uh, will greet each of you with an individual Hall of Fame plaque. First, Betsy Barr. Valerie Fletcher. <laughs> Lindsay Huey. Colleen Little. Aaron Masaki. Jessica Parker. Kelsey Parker. Kristen Peters. Rebecca Rothmeyer. Vanda Rosvadovska. Kristen Shea. Jennifer Sorensen. Kristen Taylor. and Emily Wooten. Next, the coaches of the team, Wynn McIntosh, Garrett Smith, Bill Irwin, and we're honored tonight to have here on behalf of Clive Charles, Clarina Charles. Clarina, please come forward. Now I'd like to welcome Erin Masaki to the podium to offer her thoughts on the induction for the 2002 National Championship team. This is uh, such a huge honor for us on behalf of the team. I just wanna thank the committee for um, inducting us into the Hall of Fame this is a little surreal for me because I feel like we were just here playing. I remember warming up on Merlot Field and uh, listening to Michael Jackson in the training room and, you know, just preparing for life after soccer. Um, I uh, can't tell you what a special group of people this is that we have. 
Uh, our Portland team, this team went through a lot um, in my four years, and this final season, it was the culmination of so much hard work that everybody put in, starting from you know, the time they were young kids playing and traveling, and the commitment that their families made. And uh, this season, really, this group of people, like I said, they just are such a special group. And we were led by two of the greatest coaches and people that I've ever known. Uh, Clive and Garrett, I just want to thank you guys for everything that you taught us on and off the field and for your belief in us as people. And like Max said, that was a huge part of this program was building character uh, in our players. And it was about who we were off the field just as much as who we were on the field. And I think that is so important. Um, so just one quick story about playing at Portland. I'll never forget my freshman year the first time Shannon McMillan and Tiffany Milbrick came to the field to practice with our team. I don't think I said more than two words the entire practice because I was so scared and intimidated by these Olympic uh, gold medalists. And I remember watching them run circles around us and we were playing and just it was just one of the most amazing times to watch our college team have these two super athletes, these people that we idolized come out and practice with our team. And there was a moment where Clive actually pulled me aside and pointed at Shannon and Tiff as we were playing. And he said, you're here because of them. And at the time, I really didn't understand what he meant. Um, it wasn't until years later that I grasped what he was saying. And I think it's just really important that we acknowledge all the players that came before us that really built this foundation of this program. Um, Wynn, Tiff, Mac, um, Justy, Frenchie, Ness, Kylie, all these players that put so much time and energy and their heart and soul into this program. And it really is, it's the reason that we're standing here and that we were able to finally win this championship. So thank you so much. And uh, um, we just, Portland holds a special place in all of our hearts. And we're just so appreciative of everything that the university gave us and moving forward into our lives. So thank you. We ask that the team members stay here momentarily. Also would like to invite Roman, Shannon, Wallace Panel Jr. and Joe Etzel back to the front. If uh, our inductees, we can have the whole group up here. Uh, so we'd like to have one final round of applause as Roman, Shannon, Wallace Jr., Joe Etzel, on behalf of Jim. Joe, I'm gonna make you get up, you know that. <laughs> Uh, let's have one final round of applause for our 2014 <laughs> University of Portland Athletic Hall of Fame induction class. As we invite the inductees to, to take their seats, a quick reminder to this group that there are post-banquet group and individual photos to be taken in the President's boardroom. Uh, would like to wrap up the evening with a couple of thank yous. Uh, first, the man who makes uh, the UP Athletic Hall of Fame go from the induction selection process uh, to tonight's dinner. I'd like a round of applause for Associate Athletic Director Buzz Stroud for all Buzz does for the department and the Athletic Hall of Fame. <laughs> Would also like to thank the Bon Appetit catering staff, the university events office staff, the university marketing staff, our athletic department folks here in attendance. And finally, we hope to see many of you here at the next Athletic Hall of Fame banquet, which will be held in the fall of 2016. Thank you again for your attendance. Go Pilots. <laughs>